right, we're back. Uh, today we're going to be embarking on a, some pretty major service. This is pretty much the 15,000 mile service interval for Porsche 911s. Uh, today we're going to adjust the valves, change the oil, which is required when you adjust the valves. Uh, we're going to change the spark plugs, cap rotor, and clean the air filter. Uh, typically that's a major service. I do that about twice a year. As you know, this car is on the track and it creates a lot of heat and uh, valve adjusts and oil changes come much sooner than the 15,000 miles. Also in the video you may have seen earlier the getting ready for the track I had noticed that my brake pads were less than 50 percent so we're also going to change the brake pads and flush the brake fluid. Uh, today I'm wearing all black as opposed to some of the other videos hot rod going by uh, because this is a pretty dirty job but uh, I've done it a million times and I uh, got a lot of good tricks and uh, let's get started. Alright, so we're going to put the jack stands underneath there. Um, you can see it's already put into position there, but it's very important to get the jack stands in the right spot. If you don't, the car could slip off the jack stand, it could fall on you, and that would obviously be bad. You could get crushed. So um, you'll see the torsion tube here. This is the, this is the hole. This is how you access it. But just on the other side of the fender, you'll see a little, little shaft that comes out. A lot of times people will try to put their jack stand on that and it's open on the end so the jack could fall off of that and obviously again fall off and crush you. But if you look just on the other side uh, past the, the frame, there's a section of uh, the, the uh, torsion tubes about that big around, about that long and about that big around. And basically what you want to do is put your jack stand right there in between the frame and, and, the, and the motor and the, and the inside of the transmission. So we'll show you a picture of what that looks like from underneath. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and put the jack stand on the front. Uh, you can see I have two different sizes of jack stands here. The, I, I prefer these in the back. Obviously, there's a lot more weight back there with the motor and all of that. But in the front, uh, you don't need as heavy a weight up there, and it's much easier to just, uh, from convenience perspective, the, the nice little ones like this. So we're also going to be putting this jack stand on the torsion tube on this. Now, as I said before, the, uh, the rear end, the torsion tube goes like this on the car. Uh, in the front, they actually tran they, uh, they, they travel in this direction here. So basically, I'm going to find the torsion tube, and again, I can show you all that when the tire's off, it show you can see it a little bit better. But basically, this goes in the front section of the torsion tube. Raise up the jack stand as much as possible. There you go. That's pretty much it. All right, we've got the car up on the jack stands. We've got the wheels off. We're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to swap out the brake pads on there. But before we did that, I just want to kind of go over the disc brake and, you know, some of the Porsche stuff, uh, you know, as it relates to track driving and whatever, or just brakes in general. Um, this is your pretty standard Porsche front disc brakes. This is an alloy caliper, or what they call an S caliper. So this is this, this caliper right here, which is where the brake pads live is a little bit lighter than uh, some of the other models. But you can also see here the rotor, which in for me, I run the solid uh, standard rotors on my Porsche. These are really inexpensive, I think they're like $65. I choose uh, the Paget Orange or the um, more endurance style brake pads for, they last a little bit longer, but you can see they have a lot of metal content in there. But obviously there's gotta be something in there that holds all that stuff together and it's bonding agents or glue. And what happens is, is as these brake pads get engaged, obviously onto the rotor, there's a lot of heat that's built up and there's gases that get escaped there. You can see how there's a little slot here that helps the gases escape. So um, again, that's the reason why people will run drilled or slotted I prefer not to spend a whole lot of money because with all this metal content in here, it wears out rotors. Um, but as you may have seen in some of the other track driving, I, I'm pretty quick on the brakes, pretty good, so they work for me. And uh, I prefer to keep things at a little bit lower cost and uh, pretty standard. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use some uh, compressed air to blow out all the brake dust. Again, all that metal stuff really creates a lot of, a lot of dust and it's really you know, cast iron uh, dust basically so you don't need a, a air compressor to do that you can use your brake clean your simple green but uh, simple green is uh, something that works pretty well but you want to make sure not to get it on any of the brake surfaces such as the brake pads or the rotor 
Uh, if you do use Simple Green, make sure to go over everything again one last time with the brake clean before you put it all back together. So again, uh, if you do use a uh, air compressor though, you don't want to breathe in all that metal dust, or that cast iron dust from the rotor, so you basically just get a rag or something, cover your face and start blowing it out. All right, so to get Porsche brake pads out, it's pretty simple in the front. You just got a couple of these little pins you just pull out like so. And you take a screwdriver or just something and you push the pins out. Push and pull. <laughs> you can see this retaining spring pops out. Make sure not to lose your little pins or anything like that. Oh, there's the other one. So then we take the second one, just push it through. You can see how easy that came out without that spring. And now here's our brake pads and we just pull them on out. You can see that, uh, well, shoot. Yeah, it's about 50%, I was about right. About 50% of the pad left. I still have a groove in the middle, so it's good. But you can see we're crystallized pretty good on here. These brakes got super hot, which is pretty standard at the track. Now, take, sometimes the, obviously the pistons are stuck out a little bit farther and you have to get in here and kind of pry them back which is uh, can be a little bit of a pain in the neck, but your old pads, you just need a little bit of leverage. You take a screwdriver, kind of just give it a little bit. And it should come out. There we go. That one too, wow, look at all that crystallization on there. That's a lot of heat being generated. So anyway, they still would have worked fine. Obviously, uh, they're getting their, they're doing their duty. All right, so now we have to get the uh, uh, brake caliper pistons to you know, retract so that we can get these nice brand new fat uh, pads in there, uh, which you know, this, I found this tool at my local you know, auto parts store. It's, it works great, although I did have to spacer it, and so I basically just use a, a, a socket in between here to give me a little bit extra room. So it just basically slides in there and it you know, accordions it out basically. So you get that mounted in there centered on the piston as best as possible. Start screwing that. And there the pistons start moving back. We've got the pistons pushed back in their bores. We're gonna go ahead and test fit our brake pads in there. You can see that one fits in there real nice. And this one on the other side. Sometimes they fit in a little snug, but you can kind of push on that piston a little bit, give you a little extra room. And there you go, that looks like that fits in there pretty good. So now what we need to do is we need to put these pins back in. You remember with the little Carter pins and all that stuff. So basically you start off with just one, put it on the bottom. I tend to do the bottom. I mean, you could probably do anything you wanted. Uh, but you also want to line up that little hole so you can see it once it's in. So there you go, you can see the little hole right there and you take your little Carter pin, stick it in. There you go, you're great. Now remember that spring that kind of flew off earlier. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there like so. I'm gonna take that other pin. It's like if I could find it. Oh, there we are. Under my foot always. Uh, again, there's that little hole right there. You wanna make sure that's pointing out so it's easy to see. Basically, use your thumb. This one's always a little bit more difficult and sometimes uses needs the convincer, AKA the hammer. All right, so then I put the little Carter pin in. There you go, your brake pads are on in the front. Rotor's spinning, uh, that's all good news. All right, so now we're on the rear brake. Uh, it's slightly more difficult in the fact that you can't turn the, the brake caliber to face you, but it's basically all the same as the front in the fact that you have the little pins, which uh, here I'll show you. You can see the little pins just like the other, the other one. Uh, get this out and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about the brake pads. But again, stuff comes out super easy. Porsche is really good about that. Again, uh, the cars are made for endurance racing. So pads wear out, you want to be able to replace them quickly. But again, I'm using the orange brake pads on the back. You can see they're quite a bit smaller than the fronts, and they also don't have the little groove down the middle here. 
Uh, also, you typically don't replace, you don't have to replace these at the same time. The rear brake pads don't wear out nearly as fast as the front. It just so happens in this case, I'm gonna be doing both. Um, but again, they're both uh, Paget Orange. Uh, they both basically go in about the same. All right, we finished uh, putting the brakes on the car all in all four corners. So now it's time to do the, the uh, brake flush. Um, as you can see here, I've got uh, brake fluid. This is super blue racing fluid. Basically, it uh, is not standard like you see on your passenger cars because again, uh, extremely high heats. This stuff is capable of withstanding, or the boiling point for this stuff is 536 degrees. So again, I use that because of the high heat for racing. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brake fluid, we're gonna put it into the reservoir, we're gonna pressurize the reservoir with this tool here. Um, basically that's that's the way I prefer to do it because I'm usually out here by myself but you may remember back in the days or I don't know if your dad ever had you out in the driveway bleeding brakes on the old car basically you'd sit at the steering wheel and your dad would tell you to push down on the brake pedal you'd stop you told him you stop he would do something underneath and then he'd tell you to release and you release and then he would do something else undoing something which I'm gonna show you later and then you push your foot back down while you're pressurizing the brakes because it's a big hydraulic system so instead of having to have somebody push on the brakes from the master cylinder, we're just gonna go ahead and pressurize the system. Now, before you do that though, there is an overflow on this brake uh, reservoir here. Again, boiling point, things get hot, things wanna overflow, but to pressurize it, you have to go ahead and block off the, the, uh, the overflow hose on that. The best way to do it is just a little vice grip right there. So then basically, you take the, uh, the reservoir cap off and then you screw on the top piece right here. All right, now uh, prior to pumping up or pressurizing your brake system, you wanna go inside of the cabin of the car and pump on the brakes about 10 times. What you're trying to do is make sure that those brake pads that we just put in there are firmly against the calipers. When you bleed brakes though, one important thing to remember is that you wanna bleed starting at the farthest point away from the master cylinder or the brake reservoir. So we're gonna pressurize the system. We're gonna go back to the right rear corner of the car, bleed that brake. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to the, the left rear of the car, bleed that brake. Then we'll go over here to the right front of the car, bleed that brake, and then we'll finish over here on the left side, which is the shortest distance. What we're trying to do is push out any old brake fluid any air bubbles, anything like that out, out of the system. And the best way to do that, obviously, is starting at the longest point first. All right, so we're back here at the uh, right rear wheel of the car. Again, that's the farthest away from the master cylinder the brake reservoir. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bleed the brakes. I've got an eight millimeter wrench right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the box end. Don't You never wanna use the open end on, on brake parts or these little nipples. They tend to strip out. So you always wanna get a good firm connection with this box end. So uh, you'll need a hose. Uh, this is one I've had forever. Um, you can use any kind of rubber hose, but uh, it needs to be clear in the sense that what we're gonna do is first we're gonna take off the little rubber Bush, uh, grommet there and then we're gonna stick the rubber end of the hose onto the back side of the of the nipple now again you want to use the the uh, box end of the wrench so you get that fitted on first then you put the nipple on and what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this up and it's gonna take that pressurized brake fluid it's gonna push it through the caliper gonna send it out this hose and what we're gonna look for is gonna look and make sure that this is a nice blue color with no bubbles Bubbles mean that there's a void in there, which makes your uh, brakes get spongy. So anyway, we've done all that, we're ready to go. So I'm just gonna loosen this up a little bit. You can see it coming out really nice and quick. I don't see any air bubbles in there. Oh, there was a couple little ones right there. It's always good to have a light source in behind your hose. And uh, the case being that that helps you uh, see the bu bubbles a little bit more. But I think we're pretty good on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and close the system, tighten it down pretty good. Pull the hose off, let all that brake fluid drain into the reservoir. And then we're gonna go ahead again, go to the next farthest one away, which is the driver's uh, rear wheel. Then we'll go to the right front wheel, and then we'll finish with the left front wheel brake leading. 
All right, so now we're up at the front of the car and the brakes again are a little bit different. Um, you can see here, this caliper's got two nipples where you can bleed the brakes from. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and bleed from all the way on the outside. These brakes uh, calipers have been on here for a while. Uh, so that you know they've, they've, there's plenty of fluid in there but when you rebuild them or when they're completely dry you definitely want to bleed here get as much air out as possible then go to the outside now this also these the nipples are a little bit larger so now I've got a 10 millimeter wrench as opposed to the 7 so again we're gonna do the same thing though we're gonna let the brake fluid flow through and we're gonna look for air bubbles all right the brake job and it, well, the brake job and the brake bleed are done um, now at this time you basically if that's all you're going to do you go ahead and put the wheels back on and uh, lower the car down but i'm doing a valve adjust oil change and a little bit of a tune-up on this thing so i'm going to go ahead and leave it on the jack stands but this is the first time i'm going to test the brake pedal and see how it looks oh man that's nice way stiffer 